I have never been in trouble on, on any level um, before. So sitting squarely on state land, he kept uh, assuring me that he was calling the authorities, that he was calling the prosecuting attorney's office, and that I was going to be arrested. And they said, well, what you think and what is going to happen here are two different things, that Kennecott has authority to, to work here, and you do not have authority to be here. We are arresting you. Strip search, put on the stripes, um, uh, given my two blankets, my two sheets. The scariest part was lockdown, because then when they came in to lock you down at 10 o'clock, every door was slammed. And I mean, slammed, click, next door, slam, click. And then when it gets to you and go slam, click, the matron came in and said, Ms. Pryor, gather up all your belongings, you're out of here. By the time I was walking out the door, they were shouting, power to the people. <laughs> I go up to the plains a couple times a week, um, and sometimes more, and I was going out to the McCormick Wilderness to take a hike with my dog, so I had my dog with me, and um, generally what I do is I traverse through um, the state land area just to check on the actions. I belong to the Yellow Dog Watership Reserve, and it's our job to monitor, and we've been monitoring them for their activities up there for about seven years. So I would typically swing through the state land portion of it and see what's going on. So I was very surprised when I saw a bulldozer sitting in, right on state land where there has been no activity before. So at that point I, I um, got out and approached the bulldozer that was not running and the operator that was standing alongside of it and just asked what was going on and what he was doing and indicated that he was developing the fence line. He was brushing clear um, all of the trees to, to put the fence line that was going to cordon off the state land and cordon off Eagle Rock from the public. So this is state land. I was uh, sitting squarely on state land. Um, I had been out there three days before camping and there was a rally out there on top of Eagle Rock, which, which made the news, and no one ever approached us and said, you are trespassing. So I was doing my usual route, and then I was questioning this individual's work on state land um, because I know that that permit is not fulfilled yet. They still have to get that EPA. Even though they say they don't need it, they do need it. And so I was very surprised to find them there. So I just approached them, and he said he was waiting for some blueprints, and. And so there was a, a stump where he had quit his work, of a, a root ball. And I went and sat on it and I said, well, I'll wait with you. At that point in time, he went and got security, and that was the start of it. And so make it clear, you were not trying to block a bulldozer. No, I was sitting in front of a bulldozer that was not moving and did not have an operator on it. Okay. And then what happened? And then security came, um, informed me that I was trespassing, and did I realize I was trespassing? And I said, no, I did not, because I was on state land, and I was a citizen, I'm allowed to be on state land. And he indicated that I was, and that he wanted me to leave, and at that point in time, I decided I was staying. And then? And then he kept uh, assuring me that he was calling the authorities, that he was calling the prosecuting attorney's office, and that I was going to be arrested. Would I leave? I said, no, I'm staying. And then um, the authorities came and they asked me all those same questions. Do you realize that you are trespassing? I said, no, I'm on state land. I'm a citizen. I have a right to be here. And they said, well, what you think and what is going to happen here are two different things, that Kennecott has authority to, to work here and you do not have authority to be here. We are arresting you. So they asked me to leave one more time and I refused and they arrested me. And do you want to talk about anything about what you went through with the jail? Well, jail, I, I have never been in trouble on, on any level um, before. And so for me to be thrown into a holding tank, which is basically a bubble room, which is all glass and a concrete floor and uh, bright, uh, bright lights uh, shining down 24-7, and they give you two blankets and you stay there and for 24 hours until you're arraigned and they figure out what's going to happen with you. And so you're sleeping on concrete, or trying to, with the bright lights. People are passing right and left. People are being booked. It's right near all of the, the booking area. Um, it was a, just really physically uncomfortable. Um, 
you know, you, they don't want to make it a fun place because I think the first time anyone hits that, they're going to realize they don't want to ever do that experience again. So once I then was arraigned by the judge, he put a bond on me for $1,000 and bail at $100, which is 10%. And um, I decided not to pay the bail and stay in jail. So then they moved me upstairs, strip search, put on the stripes, um, uh, given my two blankets, my two sheets, my little hand towel, my toothbrush, toothpaste, and a comb, and a bar of soap, and they put me into a cell block, which had ten separate cells. So you got you did get your own space. So you got a bunk in a in a um, little table with a middle chair, all all locked in together, and a combination sink toilet, and the door locks. So. And then that enters into a, a commons area where they have tables where um, the ten women that were there eat and recreate, play cards or talk or listen to the radio or watch TV. And there's a certain prescribed schedule. Five o'clock, the lights turn on. Six o'clock, breakfast is served and everybody has to line up at, their, at the door. And um, it was just that, that, you know, you have to do certain things, of course. And, um, but the, the scariest part was lockdown. Because then when they came in to lock you down at 10 o'clock, every door was slammed. And I mean, slammed, click, next door, slam, click. And then when it gets to you and goes, slam, click, you, <laughs> you know you're not going anywhere. So that was uh, the holding tank first night and just jail the second night. The women were fabulous. At first they were, oh, when, you know, when I first came in there, a woman asked me, have you been to jail before? And I said, no. And she showed me everything I needed to do, how you have to special tie the sheets so that it will work on the, under the mattress and, and how to get ready for shower and what you have to do and when the first thing is going to happen. I mean, they were really very good. Then they asked me what I was in for, and I said, trespass. And they go, say, what? <laughs> what are you doing here? And they said, couldn't you bail out? How much was your bail? And I said, $100. And they're just looking at me like, you are one crazy woman. And, and they wouldn't look at me. There was one, one woman only that would talk to me for the longest time. You know, I, I would be offended too, I guess. If <laughs> I was in there, you know, in jail serving my time and this person came in that didn't have to be there. Like it was a game or a vacation, I would be irritated by that too. But by the time I left, by the time I left, and um, the next day the judge called me in, uh, the, the matron came in and said, um, the judge wants to do your arraignment. And I says, I've already been arraigned. The judge wants to see you now. I said, okay, fine. Has my attorney been notified? Uh, I don't know anything about that. I need to call my attorney. Well, anyway, the judge, what he had done is he had reduced it to personal recognizance, which meant no bail, no bond. And I still didn't realize that I couldn't stay there. And I said, I just needed to talk to my attorney. So then they took me back up to the cell block, and all the girls were going, whoa, what happened? You know? And... We, so we were discussing that. The matron came in and said, Ms. Pryor, gather up all your belongings. You're out of here. And I said, I don't want to go. She turned around to one of the, the, the women and said, Well, Sue, have you ever heard that? This one doesn't want to go. What do you think about that? And, and she's going, Dateline's coming here. When Dateline comes here, I want to be interviewed. I can tell you all about this place. And by the time I was walking out the door, they were shouting, Power to the people! <laughs> I mean, you know, so that's how that went. And to be clear, it was because you were wanting to prove a point. That Absolutely. didn't think you should have been arrested. If I was going to be arrested, it was going full shot. And it was kind of more or less jail overcrowding that, that you being kicked out. That uh, I don't think they wanted no. me in jail. It wasn't overcrowded. It, they did not want me there. Power to the people! Well, we've demanded a jury. Yeah, that, that, at this point, is what we intend to do. Um, take it to six people.